Hey YouTube, it's Ken. Uh, what's going on? So we're gonna continue our RPG uh, Maker how to create your first game tutorial. Last time we wrapped up creating our first town. Uh, it was a really long video, about an hour long, and uh, I think uh, I'm trying to figure out various ways to kind of generate interest. So I'm considering shortening my uh, you know, weekly tutorials a bit. Let's see. So, I promised last week that we were going to cover panoramas. Um, I'll show you guys the basic application, but I'll also go a bit more in-depth. I'm thinking this time I'll uh, try to make the video about 20 minutes or so, just to give you guys an idea and, you know, so it doesn't get too boring or whatever. Um, one thing I do want to say is that I I'm just beginning the YouTube channel, so I only have like six videos up right now. I'm very new to it, but at the same time, um, I'm not feeling like i um, generating a lot of interest in my videos. Uh, I have tried promoting on forums and, you know, things of that nature, but, uh, you know, it's still kind of starting up, um, which, which is fine because I only started making my videos like a couple of weeks ago, but if you guys have any comments or any suggestions on how you know I could get the community involved more or whatever, uh, just leave it in the comment section or message me or whatever, and I'll definitely look at that and try to implement those suggestions um, if I agree with them. But so panoramas, uh, you have your RPG Maker uh, game engine opened. Uh, hopefully, you created a map last time. Um, let me show you a quick use of panoramas that come with the engine itself or the RTP um, so I'm gonna hit my folder directory here right click new map we'll name this pano map and under settings here it says use parallax background so that's the same thing as a panorama um, if I check this box right here I get three different options I can choose the background so if, okay well that's an example map but these are RTP right here, so I can choose one of these. Um, I can choose this one for now, and then I can choose uh, options for scrolling. So horizontal scrolling means left to right, uh, vertical up and down. Pretty self-explanatory. If I check this, I can either auto scroll and set my speed up to eight or minus eight. So the further you get, so minus eight is going to move this image to the left at the speed of you know negative eight and positive eight is going to move this image to the right on our map um, if I go to vertical scroll auto scroll uh, plus eight is going to move it I believe down but we can check all right let's just check really quick here um, so we created a new map uh, you know it's 15 or 20 by 15 I believe yeah 20 by 15 dimensions um, we're gonna go to lower tile if nothing's visible right now even though we selected that image for the parallax background what we have to do is select this image or this tile right here the purple one um, it's gonna be the purple one for the default RTP and uh, chipset and remember the chipset is this uh, bit right here all the graphics displayed here in this window um, basically let me show you guys so if I import a chipset Go to this is my directory for Eden Gate. If I import a chipset and we'll choose this one right here for now, but you'll see that this is what it looks like. Um, the image that's blinking right now, or the part of this image that's blinking right now, the blue, the light blue, green, whatever color that is. Um, the one that's flashing right now is going to be our transparent background, and that's the same. Um, background tile that you would select for your panorama. So, for this chipset, the town chipset, I believe, let me check, world map, I think, world map chipset, um, the transparent background is colored purple or pink or whatever. So, choose that. And right now, you can't see anything, it's all purple because we have. Uh, scrolling on, but if I turn scrolling off, 
should display actually. That's interesting. Hmm. Let me see. Let's play this. Okay. So there's our background. It should have actually displayed in our map editor though. That's interesting. Let me see if I choose. Okay. Yeah, it usually does display. I don't know why the RTP doesn't display though. Uh, this is just a panorama I made for an example. Um, let me try this one here. That's interesting. Okay, so RTP apparently doesn't display for some reason, but if you create your own panoramas, they do display. <coughs> Um, I should note that panoramas will only display, so if I go back to my example, this panorama, this image right here is 320 by 240 pixels, and it will display because this is uh, 20 by 15 tiles, but if I change this to say 21 by 15, and even if I color everything you know, purple or whatever, it's not going to display anymore, so it has to be a, the tiles have to match the pixels. Uh, exactly. Even if you're one pixel off or one tile off, it's not going to show. So that's something to keep in mind. <clears throat> Let me change this back to the sky two or whatever. Um, and so that's how we set our panorama. I can create a cliff face really quickly, just to show you guys how you might use it in your games. So right now I am in the upper uh, tile and I'm just drawing some cliffs, really basic, nothing too advanced. Uh, if you're unfamiliar then you should watch my previous tutorials. If you've seen my previous tutorials you should know uh, what exactly what I'm doing right now, exactly what tools um, I'm selecting right now. So, if you don't know, I suggest you watch those. Kind of long, but you know, I'm trying to be interesting. <laughs> so, anyways, we created our cliff face here. I think it's a little too big, so I'm gonna choose this uh, map elements tool, drag down, and then yeah, kind of move that down and take the eyedrop tool rectangular pattern and then yeah just cover that up and let's move our character over here we can add some trees really quick just to make this a bit more interesting oops okay one down there and let's add some dirt sand grass grass patches <coughs> Hmm, maybe dirt patches. Okay, and we can add some grass patches in here. So that looks better. Alright. Looks good. Um, so now if we, this is a quick example right here, if we play save, you'll see that when I hit new game, there's our image in the background, the clouds, and in the foreground we have our cliff face and you know all the trees and stuff and then our hero moving around. So if I go back to map properties on this pano map here and change the horizontal scrolling to, uh, actually let's do vertical, to plus eight or positive eight, I believe it should move down the image scroll downwards yeah so it's scrolling downwards really fast and if I change that to negative 8 or let me make that like negative 4 so you guys can see it better it'll scroll or it'll scroll downwards not as fast uh, upwards did I do positive 4 sorry I've had a no negative 4 uh. All right, sorry guys. Um, long day at work. <laughs> My brain's already fried, and it's 
16 right now. And I'm making this video tutorial. So yeah, positive scrolls the map down, negative scrolls the map up. So I had that originally switched around. But anyways, you can see uh, what scrolling does to your panorama. And finally, for this example, I'm going to do something really quick. Left click on the on the map here under when we're in our event layer. Left click on any one of the tiles under event commands. I'm going to go to page three, change parallax background, and we're going to set. <clears throat> so I don't know. Let's see. Let's try to do something interesting here. So let's have Don one scrolling four uh, okay and then we'll copy and paste this command then we'll have let's see just where's morning okay we'll have dusk one scroll at five and then copy and paste that and then we'll have night Roll at say back to four, and then we'll copy the first one here, which is dawn or no dusk, uh, dawn, whatever. That's fine. And actually, we don't even need to do this. It's already set. It, it, basically, if we go to trigger conditions and hit parallel process, it's going to do this first. And then we'll have a wait command here. Uh, say 20 seconds. And then it's gonna change the background to dusk, and then we're gonna wait, not 20 seconds, sorry, two, two seconds. Um, here, I just, you have to hit 20. If you hit two here, it's gonna do 0.2 seconds. So 20 here is two seconds. Um, and then wait two seconds, and then it's gonna switch to uh, the night. And then we're gonna do a wait two seconds again, and then it'll go back to the first line of this uh, event command window which is done and parallel process will make it loop basically so we'll hit okay okay and then play the map save it hit new so you can see that it's changing and speeds are changing accordingly to whatever we set them to so you can imagine if you watched my last video tutorial, we also did uh, tint screen right here. So you can imagine combining tint screen with, you know, changing these parallax backgrounds if you want to have a map like this. Um, usually in an RPG game that's, you know, top down, you're not going to see a parallax background. Um, it would normally be a map like this, but say, you know, there's a special map where a scene takes place over a cliff edge or something like that. Um, and you want it day and night to scroll, um, you can imagine using the tint screen and these different parallax uh, panoramic backgrounds, combining the two to create that sort of day and night uh, effect. So that's all I'll say about that. Um, next thing I want to do is forward your attention to my blog once again. So here's the blog. Um, It'll be in the description. It's Lotus Software. Um, if you go to my blog archive and go to the February section, um, you'll see this page right here. And one of the posts I have uh, put up an environment graphics pack that I made for free. Um, you're free to use this uh, in any of your games, royalty free. Um, you know, credit would be nice, but it's not necessary. But anyways, what I have is various graphics for a 2D RPG. Um, they're isometric graphics. So we have houses here, walls here, um, different floor trains. And then I also have like a sample screen at the end of each. Uh, like this is the town set right here. So at the end of each set, I have like a sample screen of what it might look like if you, you know, Photoshop all of these images together. Um, I also have a couple of like extra set, like common objects is right here. So your barrels, some boxes, some plants, a boss, some trees. And then this is the 
second set I have going on uh, cave. So we have the cave floor, like a mid sectional floor, and then the floor terrain. And then this is the sample right here. So this is the inside, or like the inside of a house interior template. Pretty cool. Uh, some paintings. These are sort of like Google images that I apply to like isometric view and added like frames around them and this is what it might look like right here and then I have a forest and finally I have a dungeon like map with my example right here but I will add more of these um, in time right now you have like 25 options to choose from um, you can mix and match and create millions of different combinations using this method which I'll show you in a second, but um, if you want to download all of them, I have all my graphics you can download from the site. Um, go to it, it's a WinRAR file, I believe, and you know, just easier that way instead of having to, you know, right click and hit save image as over and over again. But, anyways, um, I'm going to do some photoshopping here. So, this is Photoshop uh, CS5. Uh, if you don't have Photoshop, I highly recommend you get it if you are interested in creating professional, uh, you know, more interesting maps. Um, so I'm going to use my uh, map set examples here to create a panorama. Um, the panorama we showed here is sort of like more scenic, um, and the panorama I'm about to create using these graphic sources is going to be more of like a actual gameplay like something you create for the hero to like kind of run around you know that sort of panorama um, so all I'm gonna do is hit copy here right click copy um, go to Photoshop I'm gonna hit control and N which is going to bring up a window here um, I'm gonna change the width to 320 which is the resolution once again for RPG Maker uh, 2003 the height is 240 so 320 by 240 resolution I'm going to make it 100 and hit OK <clears throat> okay and then hit Control new again enter and then Control and B because we're going to paste that image and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this black background here, so I'm going to use my eyedrop tool. Um, I'm, I'm going to go through this Photoshop a bit fast. Uh, this is not meant to be a Photoshop tutorial. I'll probably do that later on, um, probably after my RPG Maker tutorials. But if you're unfamiliar with Photoshop, um, you know, I'll, try, I'll, try, I'll try to do my best to... <laughs> wow, tongue tied. Uh, I'll try to do my best to kind of go over it. Um, so I'm just gonna hit the eyedrop tool here, or not not the eyedrop tool. Wow, well, the magic wand tool. I'm gonna hit that here and delete. That'll get rid of our black uh, background, and then we're gonna use this marquee tool, I believe. Yeah, rectangular marquee tool. Drag around the house. Hit Control C to copy that. Hit Control D. Now these houses are a bit big, so we're going to have to resize them for uh, the RPG Maker 2003 engine. Originally I made these graphics for RPG Maker XP and VX which have higher resolutions and in which case this house would be appropriately sized, but if I hit Ctrl and T, we're going to transform this uh, selection here, I'm going to hit Shift, um, move my mouse over this bottom right. Uh, rectangular box and then kind of drag it to about here looks good hit enter and there you go I'm also going to hit control and zero and that's going to uh, make this window fit full screen not full screen but to scale um, I'm gonna hit control and then I can move this house around a bit uh, so I'll move it here and I'm gonna hit control A just like all um, of this image here while my marquee tool is selected and then I'm gonna hit control C and then control V. Alternatively alternatively I could control Z that and then I could choose just this layer here and hit control D to duplicate. 
And it should duplicate. Uh, I don't know why it's not duplicating. Uh, or was it Control J? No. There we go. Control J. Okay. Uh, so it's Control J to duplicate. <laughs> I haven't used Photoshop in a while, as you can tell. So I'm gonna transform this image to face the uh, horizontal, face horizontally, kind of flip that around on its horizontal axis. While holding control, move this image down here. I'll go back to my blog and let's see. Let's go to the forest set and Copy this, force terrain, um, copy image here. I'm gonna hide this image and hit Control V to paste. Once again, we're gonna want the magic wand tool, and then we're gonna want to delete the back, black background. Um, copy that, and I'm gonna hide these two layers for now. Select my background layer, paste, so the new layer appears over the background uh, layer and not over the house layers. So that's our uh, grass drain. I'm gonna resize this once again. And we're gonna do some duplicating. So Control J. I'm gonna place it right there. It's almost like a Lego set. That's how I like to think of it. You're kind of just placing whatever you want, however you want. Kind of like a puzzle, kind of like a Lego set, that sort of thing. And then um, what I did there was I hit Control E to merge all the layers here, so it's all one layer now. Move that over there, Control J again, and we're just kind of repeating the process, except that, uh, diagonally this time. So that looks good. Control E to merge the layers. Control J to duplicate the layer, and there we go. That looks good. Control E, Control J, and we're gonna move this down here. And we're gonna move this up here, and that's that's good for now. Um, if you want to make it more detailed, more um, interesting, what you can do is, whoops, go to this window right here, choose a different floor terrain, and then copy paste. And then what I like to do is blend it, so I can hit E which is the erase tool. Um, I, would, I like to choose a soft brush, so one of these. Um, and then change the size to say 50. The opacity is just about right, 35, 36. And I can kind of drag my erase tool around the edge of this image to kind of blend it in with the, the background with the previous floor terrain. And if you do this more properly than I'm doing it, it looks really cool. It kind of mixes things up. Um, I'm trying to keep my video to 20 minutes. I hope I'm not over it already, but... Um, so I'm just kind of doing this really fast, but you, you get the idea. So you can kind of blend all those and, you know, kind of mix up your train a bit, make it look more interesting. Anyways, we're gonna go back to the house. So that's what it looks like right now. And uh, if I go back to my blog, I can go to, actually, yeah, 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 up here. These trees right here, copy those. Go back to this window, hide this layer, paste the trees. And this time, if I use the magic wand tool and try to delete the black background, it's gonna look really weird. So instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is go select, color range, the eyedrop tool or icon up here, I'm going to hit the black background and change the fuzziness to 35, hit OK and delete. You can see the image was cro uh, cropped a bit better, it became a bit better, uh, I don't know, whatever, whatever, you know what I'm trying to say, jeez, long day, alright. Uh, I'm gonna move this tree layer to the very top. I hit Control T, and then I'm gonna scale it down again to maybe about here looks decent. And then what I'm gonna do is hit Control J, Control T, and then flip this uh, 
vertically. And then I'm going to hit Control and U and change the lightness all the way down. And then I'm going to hit the opacity for this layer here and change that to 25. That's good. And then I'm going to move that right under the tree so it adds a sort of shadow effect. And what I'm going to do with these two layers is hit Control E. So now the tree and its shadow are one layer, which is exactly what I want. I'm going to hit Control J. Move this up here, Control J again, move this down here, and now I'm going to hit Control U, and I'm going to change the hue of this just to give it a different effect, and then Control J again, move it over here, Control J again, move it over here, and I'm going to hit Control U again, change the color one more time to yellow maybe, say it's fall or something. But anyways, you get the idea, so... It might look something like that. Um, if you get more in depth, um, panel map to so creating a new map here, map properties. If you if you want to get more in depth, you can have your map look something like this. Is an example I made earlier on. So here I have walls. I have different um, trees. The same house. Different uh, like I have barrels and stuff. Uh, grass on the floor, um, yeah, things like that. Um, this was also just a quick example. If you want a really good example, I can show you on my blog. This image right here, let me zoom in. This image right here I made using the same um, techniques. So you can see how you know nice this technique that I'm showing you guys for the panorama. You can see how nice it can actually look in your game. And uh, let me zoom back out. So this is just a quick, quick example to give you guys an idea. Um, let's see. So say we're done with our map here. We're gonna go to image mode and index color, and it's gonna ask if we want to flatten the layers. We'll hit OK. And so all the layers become the background, turn into a background layer. And then we're gonna hit, let's see, this is the dither, a dither effect uh, set the diffusion amount at 75. If I change this to zero, I don't think you can really tell, but it changes the way the pixeling is uh, sort of created about this image. Uh, if you set it to zero, set it to 100. Um, if you have more colors, going on in this image, um, I think that effect becomes more visible. But anyways, we're just going to hit OK. So now this image is indexed, as you can see here, this is indexed. And what you want to do is you want to go to image mode and index color. You want to index your images when you're importing your files into RPG Maker 2003 because um, it only takes in 256 uh, bits of color anything more and it's not going to register so we're just going to save this as pano for tutorial we're going to name it pano for tutorial b enter and we're going to hit ok there so set it as png now i'm going to import it so i'm going to hit that import export button we're going to go to panorama import There's our image, we just imported it. If I want to set it to this map, for example, map properties, tutorial B, hit OK, and there you go, there's our map. Now if I play, start starting position there, if I play this map, you'll see that our hero is here. Right now he can't move because the world map has this tile set to an impassable, so I'm going to go to tile set world map, go down here, passability, we're gonna go change that to a circle, which means it's passable, and if we play now, you can see we can move, unfortunately we can also move over the houses and the trees, and so that's kind of messy. Uh, if you want to solve that, you can go to this event layer, and basically 
you have to, it, it, it's tile by tile collision, it's not pixel by pixel or whatever. Um, so what you want to do is create an event, set that to blank, and then change the event layer to same, and le same le layer as hero. And basically if I put the hero right here and he tries to go north, this event will block him. So we're going to put that over our house and tree images. And it's kind of annoying, but you know, it's what you got to do in this engine at least. If you're using something more fancy like, uh, I don't know, Multimedia Fusion 2 or something like that, then you can be more precise as far as your collision goes, but you know, this is how you have to do it in RPG Maker 2003. So, yeah. Now if I play, New game. You see the hero can go up there, he can go around here, but he can't actually pass um, your houses and trees, things of that nature. Um, so right now you might be asking, well it's kind of weird because shouldn't he be able to go under this tree? Yes, he should, and there's a way you can do that. Unfortunately, I do want to keep this tutorial short, so I'll probably go over that next time. I'll go over that next time briefly, and then we'll go into um, creating the inside of, say, a town map. So, like, shops and inns and, you know, houses and storage rooms, dungeons, whatever, all that good stuff. We'll sort of create the inside of those, um, those locales, and uh, we'll go over the teleport events. We'll also go over, finish up this panorama tutorial um, by creating it or having it so that our hero, this ninja dude, can actually walk under the trees, walk behind this uh, roof right here, things of that nature. So we'll do that next time. And yeah. I think that's a good stopping point. So now you guys know two uh, uses for panoramas. You can create it this way to, you know, make your own town, forest, uh, you know, playable maps, or you can create it this way if you want to have a, you know, scenic map, if you want to have a, uh, yeah. yeah, if you want to have a scenic map, you can create one like this, have clouds rolling over, you know, past these clips or whatever. Just to give you guys some ideas. Um, Alright YouTube, so if you're with me up to this point, I want to say thank you for having watched uh, this video tutorial. Uh, be on the lookout for the next one coming uh, next week sometime around Tuesday or Wednesday is usually when I try to post these videos. But I want to go back to the point that I mentioned in the beginning, which is kind of garnering some attention um, for these videos and generating some community interest. So. What I want the community to do for those you know who've been watching my videos, um, what I want you guys to do is go into the RPG Maker engine, and whether you're using RPP or custom graphics, or whether you're using the techniques I showed in this video, and you know the graphics available in my blog, create your own map, post a video response to this video, and we'll have you know each other take a look at those videos, comment on those videos. And this is just to generate some community interest, which is what I'm really hoping to do. Um, thanks again for sticking around, and I will see you guys next video. So, take care.